Yeah, well, uh, it's going to be a another great day here on the GMAP Broadcast Network. Yours truly, Pastor Kevin. And, of course, I, I'm thanking God on today because things are actually... You know what? When things seem to be going in the negative direction, it seems like things are always getting better. And... I always have a tendency to try not to operate out of worry, out of doubt, out of fear, out of anger, out of animosity, because all of those things are always going to be there. And with that being said, I thank God for those who are continuously maintaining their status of support with the GMAP Broadcast Network, we are a live streaming gospel radio television broadcast network and global media ministry. And, you know, a lot of people have tried to devalue, dog out, disrespect, dishonor, and discourage either myself or the process that I belong to. I understand that everything does not always go according to plan. I understand that sometimes during the process of business and or agreements, things happen. I understand that a lot of times some things may happen even beyond our control. And that does not always set well with others. If something happens beyond your control and things do not go according to plan or a certain certain thing has been set up for you to uh, do business with somebody or an agreement has been worked out and it doesn't go the way you hoped it would I want to say this give people the benefit of the doubt anything could be happening and or has happened even in their personal lives that allow things to get somewhat sidetracked. I'm a witness. Something happened to me recently. I won't get into detail, but by that certain thing happening to me beyond my control, a meeting was missed or an interview might have been missed. And by the time I had overcome what I was going through, I was the worst person on earth on social media. It's amazing because the individual that began to put me out there in a negative way had no idea what I was overcoming or what hurdle I just had to jump just to get back on track. It really hurt my feelings. I was really disappointed. I wasn't angry. I wasn't discouraged. But then during that process, a lot of people jumped on that negativity bandwagon and began to speak more negativity into the atmosphere because of what this young lady or this person had said in a negative way and pulled others into it. Listen, if you have something negative to say about somebody, don't bring that negative spirit to me. Leave it where it is. We always want to shout, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And then talk about each other like dogs. Pray, praise, and press your way. Instead of discouraging, dismantling, you know, dogging out, devaluing, disrespecting each other. Keep that negative spirit inside of you if that's the way you want to operate. With that being said, that I've gotten that off my chest. I thank God for those that continuously show their love, their care, their concern, and their support to the GMAP Broadcast Network without allowing the negativity of today's society to take precedence in their decision making. The reason I say that is because I got a guest I'm going to call on the phone right now who is one of those individuals who has not allowed any negativity to step in our way, in our path, and discourage our process. Let me see if this phone line really works. 
on the shelf. Hello? Good morning, good afternoon, and or good evening. It depends on what part of the world you are in, but make it good. Is this is this <laughs> Sharon Shelton? Yes, it is. <laughs> God bless you, sister. How you doing today? Good morning, good afternoon. I am blessed. How about yourself? <laughs> if you have to ask, I must be slipping. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> boys and girls, uh, let me see, dudes and dudettes. I don't know if that's one, but I'm going to add that in there anyway. Uh, I want you to help me welcome the young lady that I am just uh, 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 made the phone call to. She's one of the individuals that I was speaking of during my, my little rampage a few minutes ago about uh, 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 maintaining her love, care, concern, and support in spite of what others might think, do, feel, and or say. Let me tell you something. There's no one on earth that could bring to me anything. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they feel. How they feel. I don't care what they say in a negative way about Sharon Shelton. I don't know her that way. You might know her that way. You might have had a bad experience with her. Maybe when she was sewing up one of your dresses, she did it in a, a color that you didn't like. Now, you didn't talk to Bonnie like a dog. I'm talking. But I love her. Sharon, how you doing? Introduce yourself to the world. Tell them who you are. Tell them where you're from. <laughs> hey, world. I am your seamstress, really known as Sharon Shelton. I'm born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis City, a few minutes from the Arch. Uh, I reside in Memphis, Tennessee, as of now, with my family. Amen. What part of Tennessee are you? I'm in Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis. East Memphis. Oh, wow, Memphis, Tennessee. Now, are, are you hanging out over there by by the uh, Elvis Presley Mansion area blocks? I am not hanging out over there. <laughs> no disrespect to Elvis, but I'm not hanging out over there. I am hanging out. Um, I'm out closer to the Hickory Hill area. Ah, okay, now. Yeah. I visited. I, I went, go all over the city, though. I go all over the city. I once visited Memphis, Tennessee, and it seemed like uh, uh, everything was Elvis Presley back then. And it, it seemed like he took up more more space than the White House. You know. Um, he really does consume a lot of the city. Um, oddly, I worked in the travel industry before COVID-19 and before the face mask era, but um, he took up a lot. Like, people come from all over the world. Um, I did a tour with 30 Europeans, yeah. and they paid thousands of dollars to come to the U.S., and they came to Memphis to see the Elvis Presley Museum. That was odd. Wow. But, yeah, people all over the world love the man. Yeah, well, you know what? It is what it is. I won't, I won't add or take away anything from whoever decides they want to love the man. I'm going to leave them where they're at <laughs> uh, and keep on doing what I'm doing. Uh, I have my love. I have my passion. I'm on. I, I, I'm on. Uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. So, with that being said, uh, I want you to just kind of break down. You know, I I have been blessed most recently to have uh, Sharon Shelton be a part. I'm going to add the word seamstress. Uh, seamstress Sharon Shelton become a part of our broadcast network, Global Media Ministry family, and of course. Uh, I need you to break down what exactly is it that you do? Because a lot of people hear the word seamstress. A lot of people may see some of the things that you're capable of, uh, maybe on social media. Uh, I mean, we have so many avenues these days, but I want to hear it from your mouth. Sharon Shelton, seamstress Sharon Shelton, tell, tell the world exactly what it is that you do before we talk about the products and services that you have to offer? Well, I sew, definitely. So I have three or four sewing machines. I have one goes down, I have another one to jump on, thank God. Um, and I sew. I put together pieces, so I make from scratch sometimes using a pattern. Um, a lot of times I do alterations. I have alteration clients coming today. Um, I also enhance other products. 
So somebody brings me something that's old or that's new, and they want to change the look, and then I do that as well. Wow. Well, you know, I, I have something in common with you. My mother is a seamstress. And no, I don't have it. She's been she she's been doing it a long time, but she, you know, my mother is at the age now to where she's just kind of, you know, uh, I guess you can say, falling back at doing it as much. Um, and then I met a young lady who refurbished some real old sewing machines. Now I know that these days, wow. these days. There's probably new ways of being a seamstress than there was back in the old days. Now, I mean, are you using the right. same? Uh, uh, what are you using the same concept as they used 10, 15 years ago, or is there a new concept to putting together and being a seamstress uh, in today's society? Okay, well, I was raised. Um, by my great grandmother who sewed. So she sewed by sewing machine. Um, as a little girl, I sewed by hand because we were too little and she wouldn't let us use the machine. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, uh, I kept the passion. And in high school, I took fashion design so I was able to use the machine. And Granny eventually allowed me to use her machine. Um, but yeah, I sewed as a kid by hand and then I started using the sewing machine. The methods that I use are the ones I was taught by my great grandmother, who was born and raised in Greenwood, and then by my uh, fashion design teacher. The second love of my life, Naomi Easter, the best thing in St. Louis. Uh, she taught me how to sew in high school. So with those two combined things, I think I use older methods. Uh, I'm 40 years old, not ashamed to tell it. I've been passionate about sewing since my 20s, uh, a little bit earlier. With that, I'm saying, because I'm young, a lot of people are blinking and, mm. you know, people got their own style of things and everybody say, Sharon, you need to do this, this is what's going, you need to do this, this is what's going. Mm -hmm. But no matter what I make, because I don't stick to one thing, I have my niche, but no matter what I make, I try to put 100% into it. Now, with that being said, I cannot be the Chinese people. I just can't. A lot of people try to compare my, my product or my skill set to people overseas. I'm an individual person. I'm a mom. I'm not just birthing my kids. I'm actually raising my kids. So I'm an active mother and I run my business. But on top of all of that, I produce quality products. Amen. I've never had a customer that was unsatisfied. And if they was, they had the ability to come back I'm out of my product to the end. And I stand by my name and my work. Amen. So that's what keeps me going. It gets overwhelming sometimes because it is just me. But I promise you, if God did not come to me and say, you need to be sewing, I would not be sewing. But I need to be sewing. Like, people get so much joy out of my product. Uh, the messages I get, the calls I get, the pictures I see. And then, like, it's like the feeling that people get. It's like, wow, that's me? You know what I mean? Like, it's unreal. It really is. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, you know, I'm excited for you because um, a lot of... Let me, let, let me say it like this. A lot of times people have to look at the concept of what you do. I'm a broadcaster. I'm in ministry. And a lot of people might ask, okay, well, what's the, what, what's the focus of having seamstress Sharon Shelton be a part of your broadcast network family? I said because what she offers, everyone needs, including those that serve the Lord. Mm. That's a word right. for somebody right there. Okay, now if you decide right. you want to use it, I didn't trademark that. Everybody could use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm just saying, I, I can see what you're doing is as it, it's an asset, it's a necessity, um. And it's, it's something that everyone in the world can benefit from. See, you did not allow the passion that God embedded and or incorporated in you be something that is segregated to one area or one denomination or one color. Right. or right. It, it, It's what you do. And that's one of the reasons I like to stress 
that's the purpose and the point of making sure that we present who you are and what you do to people around the world. Now yes, I'm going to start sir. talking about some of the products and services because our next conversation is going to begin to include showing the people some of your work. Today okay. we're going to talk about it. The next conversation we have two weeks from now, we're going to show them. Now, just share with some of our viewers around the world some of the products that you have currently uh, been able to provide to some of your customers. Currently, I am a face mask maker. Uh, fabric is kind of far and in between. Um, the price gouging, so they charge a double, a triple. Some people charge a quadruple for the same fabric that I used to buy last year at a very affordable cost. But with that being said, it's kind of hard to keep up on inventory. I do have face masks right now, all different kinds, all different teams, all different colors, and all different sizes. Uh, men, women, children, different things. Um, I outsource, so I work with a lot of different people. I have a printer that I work with, uh, App Inc. Apparel, that still is married. And she does the custom prints for me, so I also offer custom printed masks. Um, I do t-shirts, I do polos, I do hoodies. If a person comes to me, I could create whatever it is they want. It's just a matter of locating the fabric, and that's about it. So as long as I can get the fabric in my hand, then I can make whatever they want. Wow. Well, you know, I'm going to say this, um, and the re I'm going to say this for a reason. We... We can see the, the fact that what you're doing is going to be something that's going to grow so, so quickly. It's going Aww, to, it's go, well, the reason being because now you have people, we're getting back into what we call our norm, and our norm has become virtual. So you'll be able to provide on a virtual level what you're doing, the products that you have to offer, uh, how you can be reached. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. And of course, uh, you know, people, you still got choirs doing church. You still got pastors. Right. You still got pastors doing church. There's choirs out there now. They'll show up in their blue jeans and tennis shoes just to be coordinated. Now, are you a, a, a an individual that's willing to open your doors and take orders for mass orders, such as choir robes, for instance? Yes, sir. Are you talking about to produce those? Yes. To make those? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. I have other people that I work with, so it's like, um, your attention is just me, myself. But I know a few other sanctuaries. So if I get the right size project, then I have a couple people um, that I could go to and say, hey, could you help me with this? You know what I mean? Right. I was kind of set up to grow. It's just, um, I don't know, good help is hard to find. It really is. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, because I've been trying to do this forever, and it's like now with no plan at all, it's just taking off. Mm -hmm. I just kind of go where it goes. He hasn't dropped anybody on me right now that I say, hey, come on, help me run this thing. So for now, I just run it on my own. Well, you know, I'm glad to hear the fact that you don't allow patience to get in the way. He'll drop. Yeah. He, he, God has a tendency of allowing people to cross your pathway of life at the perfect time. And, yeah. you know, uh, this conversation alone may, in fact, encourage someone to want to reach out to you simply because they want to do what you're doing. They may want to assist you. They they want to be a seamstress. They they want to be a clothes designer. They want they want something in fashion. And believe me, this is an area of life that will never get old. So you have a lot of people who are really interested in what you're doing. And I want to find out how it is that you can be reached for those that may even have this in the back of their mind. They want to get involved in 
helping you or starting their own business or going in a direction of fashion how is it that you can be connected with because a lot of times it's not what you know it's who tell us website phone number email you know gmap did i forget to mention gmap i'm just checking <laughs> <laughs> i'm just well, checking Definitely to click on the GMAP website oh. and go under the partners page and you will definitely see my logo. That's automatically understood. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> now, how, is it, how are the other ways, uh, Sharon, that you can be reached so people can reach out and make a connection with you? Okay, I am available on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Facebook is Sharon Shelton, first and last name. Also, Facebook is your seamstress. Instagram, I could be reached uh, under your seamstress. And then message me on either of those platforms. Now, that is what I operate off of 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. That's what I get the quickest. I'm going to give you my telephone number, but if you call me and I am working, I will not answer. I don't even look at it. I know it's my mom because she calls so many times in a row, which prompts me to get up and look. But if I am sewing, which I do all day long from 8 to 5, I cannot answer the phone. I need you to leave a message, send me a text message, and I promise you I get back to everybody. I can be reached via telephone at 901 five zero five seven seven one seven. I am extremely short on small talk because I'm always busy, but I am approachable. I am very pleasant. I'm a people person and I do need help. Any ideas, um, I'm willing to, you know, take those into consideration. Anybody looking to help me out, um, I am looking for some help. Uh, anybody that needs any information that they think I might have. Now, here's the thing, Pastor, I want to let you know. Uh -huh. I look like I got it together by a lot of people, but I have a network of angels. Amen. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. Like, people look like, you know, like when I step out, people think, you know, hey, she is unapproachable. That's not true. I have to walk in my confidence, and I have to be that way because of who I am and where I've been. That's right. So I look a lot tougher sometimes than I may actually be, but I'm approachable. I say that to give people strength to approach other people. Right. You see that girl that's doing what you want to do, but you're too proud to open your mouth and ask her how she did it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking somebody how they do what they're doing because that person, if God sent them to help you out, they're going to help you out. See, everybody's not just going to come to you and give you the game. you got to kind of ask for it. If you can ask somebody for money, if you can ask somebody for whatever else you need, you need to ask somebody for what you need to better yourself. Right. And I'm only saying that because I used to be shy. You can't pay me now to be shy because I look at people, not to say nobody is above me, but God takes care of all of us. So that person that you envy or that person that you're scared to have a conversation with or that person that you think don't want to give you the information you need, they may just be waiting on you to ask. You know what I mean? And then as you talk to people, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. You approach people in the proper manner. It's okay to give respect where respect is due. Mm -hmm. You're not looking soft. You're not looking like a punk. You're looking like a, an adult. An adult shows and gives respect, and that's the only way to get it. Huh? I give people the same respect that I want, and that's how I operate my business. I put my customers first. My family knows that. So if I got a customer coming, this is the customer's time, and this is what it is. But I also ask my customers to respect me when I'm dealing with my family and with my kids. And I've been blessed to have customers that understand it all. You know, I'm, I'm going to say thank you for sharing that. Um, and the reason I'm going to say that is because a lot of people will miss... The, I, how, can, how can I really ex, express what I'm saying? I agree with you wholeheartedly, 110%. And the reason I say that is because many times over the years, I had people contact me and say, I didn't reach out to you 
because I know I can't afford you. Why? I didn't reach out to you, like you said a few minutes ago, because it looked like you got it all together. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I mean, I, I can relate to that because I honestly had people tell me I didn't reach out to you because I can't afford you. Just to find out, not saying that I'm cheap labor, not saying that I'm some scam artist trying to get a dollar, not saying any of those things. What I'm saying is I had a service to provide that I was blessed with that didn't require me to keep digging mm -hmm. in your pocket for a whole lot of money. But this amount of money that I was reaching out asking for was almost unbelievable to them. They couldn't believe it. What's the catch? And right. um, all I can say is you said a mouthful. But let me tell you how <laughs> let me tell you how most people should respond to what you said they should respond by dropping their pride I'm going to say that again for those that might have missed their shout they should respond by dropping their pride a lot of times people have too much pride to ask because yeah. they're focusing on I can do better or I can do that myself I'm amazed at so many people out there today being so competitive in the same yeah. field, yeah. in the same area of expertise and passion and experience and training, when we should be trying to work together, they'll drop you like a wet rag because they want to try to do better than you. Listen, yeah. you want to do better than me, go ahead. I'm not trying to compete against you because what God has for me is already mine. It's for me. Woo! You know? The doors of the church it's are me. open. Oh. By letter, <laughs> by Christian experience. Girl, don't you get me fired up over here. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes and dudes, we got uh, seamstress Sharon Shelton on the line. And, of course, she is uh, one of our exclusive partners. I know it's something that may shock many. It doesn't shock me because I already know what God has in store for me, and it includes people like Sharon crossing my pathway of life. Uh, we want you to stop by the GMAP Broadcast Network. We're located at GMAP1.com. That's the number one, not the word one. GMAP1.com. Click on our partners area, and of course, uh, you'll be uh, able to view your seamstress, the logo. Now, I want you to be aware that soon and very soon, I'm going to personally be putting together a visual video promo commercial for Sharon Shelton. Did I say that right? I'm, I'm going to do my thing over here with your commercial too. I already know. Yeah, I'm going to put together what we call a visual video promo commercial. And I'm going to expose that commercial so the world can see that there is talent in every avenue in the Christian community. We thank God for who she is. We thank God for what she's doing. We thank God for why she's doing it. Now, I know that there has been some people along the way that kind of pushed, encouraged, and motivate you to stay on track to do what God has you doing. Um, you want to send a shout out to some of those individuals while you have that opportunity? Oh my God, Pastor, you're going to get me killed. Everybody is special to me. <laughs> well, you know what? Thanks for sharing. No, but I want to <laughs> shout out. Listen, this is serious. Okay. Serious, because everything is just so, I mean, it touches me. But honest to God, my family, like my mom, of course, um, she has been my rock. Like, she's very stern. She's very tough. She is quite proud. Yes, Ma, I hope you're listening. You are quite proud. But so am I. But as I grow older and I learn, um, I let that go. So I send a shout out to her because through her life and her experiences and her teachings, like everybody tells me I'm a, you know, a well-rounded young lady and I'm a good mom. And my kids even say that when they're not mad at me. You're a good mama. My daughter loves me. 
And I tell them it's because of my mama. So I never forget to let them know where it comes from. It's not just me. Right. All the older ladies that love me. Oh, you so respectful. And because of my mom, like, she literally beat that into me. Respect is everything. So I love her for that. My grandma, uh, my great-grandma, rest in peace, all my aunts, my cousins, and every last one of my customers. Like, my customers have become family to me. A lot of them pray for me. Um, I don't just sell products. These become personal. So if they have the opportunity to cross my path, like if they're not ordering something from me and I'm shipping it, they have the pleasure of running across my path. We have a real conversation. I touch those people in different ways as well as they touch me. A lot of them have testimonies for me to keep going and pushing. Um, they see my daughter running around my house while I'm trying to conduct my business. A lot of those people pray for me and keep pushing for me. Um, they don't have to keep sending me people. Like, I get customers, re I mean, they return and they bring people. I haven't sold one per one product and a person didn't come back. That speaks volumes, not just on my work, but on me as a person. And that's a blessing because I know they could go anywhere and shop. Everybody got masks now. So now I'm looking at it like, God, you are for real. Like, he is showing out. Mm -hmm. I mean, overflowing. I can't even catch it all. Wow. Well, you know what? I'm going to piggyback and say you're absolutely right. Um, over the past few years, um, I haven't been as close to my mom as I wish I as I wish I were. Um, growing up, I haven't. Let me say this: I haven't always been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I've made. All right, you better keep it real, Pastor. Hey, it is what it is. I. I, I, I've learned one thing about the truth. It ain't hard to tell. Why? Because I don't have to make stuff up. If you're telling the truth, you can say, you, I can tell you the truth about something that happened to me 50 years ago, and it'll be exactly the same as it was 50 years ago. Why? So, it's hard when, 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 when you don't have that relationship with someone that means so much to you, but it's easy when you have grown into the person that you are because of the yeah. relationship that you have yeah. had. So I honor yeah. you for honoring your mother because it's not the last five years that I'm so uh, um, discouraged about. Right. What I'm happy about is the last 45 years that she had right. to incorporate in me who I am today. Right. Girl, I'm fired up now. So, <laughs> I, I want to I commend you. Um, at some point in life, I know it's necessary for us to step away from our parents. And the reason I'm going to say parents, because in my generation growing up, I can't tell you. Now, this is very important, Sharon. I need you to hear this. In my generation growing up, in my high school and college years, I can't even tell you if I've met or if I know of any of my best friend's father. Mm. Growing up, I can't even tell you who their father is. Growing up, I, can, I had... Four or five people that clicked, and I knew none of their dads, but I knew mm. all. But I knew all of their moms. Right. I've right. never, I've never even met any of my best friend's father. Why? Because nine times out of ten, they were either unavailable or absent. I look at my child's, my children now. And I have a basketball team of children. I. I, ah! I <laughs> 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 now you gonna say, listen, Sharon? I tell you. That's all right, now, Pastor. That's all right. We it's all right. We're keeping this professional. <laughs> I'm now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just. It ain't hard to tell the truth. <laughs> now, what I'm grateful for, my friends, I mean, my son's friends 
will never experience what I went through coming up as a child. Mm. I can be, I, I can be late or or lacking paying child support. I can be uh, uh, the worst person in the world in our community, but I'm going to be there for my children. I'm going to show my face at the basketball game. I'm I'm going to show up to the cheerleading rehearsal. Yeah. I'm I'm going to go to the yeah. band recital. I'm matter of fact, your friends coming over. I want to meet them. Yeah. I can't tell yeah. you what to do, what not to do, when you do it, where you do it, why you do it, who you do it with, but I want them to know that you have me there. Yeah. Now yeah. you might you might look and put your hands in your face and say, "Oh Lord, here come Daddy again," but that's okay with me. <laughs> so I commend you. I commend you for that because it's important to recognize that hey, growing up, we may not have had you know what? My mom used to tell me this, Sharon, and we're going to move on. She said, people used to think we were rich. I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out how people can think we rich when we ate oatmeal every day. When there was three of us living in, in a house where there was three boys in one room sleeping on bunk beds. Mm. I didn't even have enough money to buy a bike, so I had to go mm. steal one mm. and paint it, thinking that the people wasn't gonna know to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. My point is, you said a mouthful when you said people seem to not want to approach you because you got it all together. Listen, looks can be deceiving, but if it looks Amen. like, if it looks like you have it all together, then she should be the first person you approach because you want to look like that too. Amen. I appreciate you, Sharon. Thank you so much. You shared a mouthful. Um, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, seamstress Sharon Shelton, uh, your seamstress. Call her, contact her, and listen, Facebook does not always work. Use the text message. Text her. Call her. Text her. Listen, I'm a witness. I tried to Facebook you this morning, and it didn't even go through. Okay. So stop depending on what everybody else is doing, because let me tell you something. I think everybody needs to know this. Artists, singers, managers seamstress whoever you are if you can't be reached then you can't be reached right i'll let that marinate for a minute okay time's up listen you got to make yourself reachable facebook has its policies facebook does things that are uncontrollable to you I have, right. people, I have people reaching out to me now that I reached out to six months ago. I gave up on them because I, <laughs> I, I, I gave up on them. I literally gave up on them because I felt like they didn't want to be bothered with me. Now, the, the amazing thing about that is, hmm, amazingly enough, I never received their information. Mm. And it was something beyond their control. But it wasn't them. It was Facebook. So I got what you're saying. I got it. I got it. Yeah. I I think people really, 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 really need to know that they should really stop putting their trust in things that they have no control of. If you can pick up the phone and make the call, make a text, then yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. All right, so I appreciate you. Um, we're going to look forward to uh, many, many other conversations such as this one. Again, our next conversation is going to include showing the people who you are 
showing the people some of your product. And don't forget, I'm getting ready to put together that commercial promo that's going to blow folks away. <laughs> yeah, I just... Think, Alrighty, I'm ready. I appreciate you. Hey, we appreciate you. We thank God for you. We want you to continue to be blessed and continue to be a blessing to others, okay? All right. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Take care, Sharon. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That's Sharon Shelton. Seamstress Sharon Shelton here on the GMAP Broadcast Network. Until next time, peace. God bless you. Take care. Take it easy. If it's uh, good to you, take it twice. Pastor Kevin, feeling good. Music sounding blessed. Oh my God, man, you just, you just made my day.